Aloha and welcome back to my three-part series on carbon-60. This is part two, understanding dosages. My name is Kelmer and thanks for stopping by. Before I get into this, I do want to do a little disclaimer because we're now talking about dosages and I just want to make it very, very clear that this information is for research purposes only. This is absolutely not medical advice. And I also don't sell this stuff, don't make this stuff, don't know anybody who does make this stuff other than individuals. And I take no compensation in any form uh, for doing these videos. And lastly, I really think it's important to state that no one should really ingest anything into your body based on a YouTube video. I encourage everyone to do research before you do anything to yourself and to your critters. So. One other tiny thing is in part one, when I was talking about the rat study, uh, I made a mention of how the C60 was, the C60 oil was uh, administered to the rats. Uh, and I, I just want to clarify that it wasn't in the bloodstream and orally. It was all uh, done through the digestive system. Uh, and what they were doing in the rat study was they were using gavages, which is like a feeding tube. And they were also giving it uh, orally through a syringe. And at the end of the at the end of the day, what they were worried that the, the feeding tube was going to harm the rats, so they stopped doing it uh, with feeding tubes, and they just went it with uh, syringes, uh, you know, squirting it in their mouths. So it did not go into the bloodstream. So every uh, the way that the study uh, was done was through the digestive system. Okay, jump in. The rat study. Now, if you remember from part one, the rat study dosage was 1.7 milligrams of fullerenes uh, per kilogram of body weight and that the saturation level of the C60 fullerenes, the powder, in the oil was 0.8 milligrams uh, or per milliliter of the oil. And if you did quick math, it comes out to 2.125 milligram or milliliters, sorry, per kilogram of body weight. So that's exactly like in liquid form, that's how much you need to take per kilogram of what you weigh uh, or what your big rat weighs or your horse weighs, etc. And so I did this little table just to do the simple math so it's easy to see. So you can pause this thing, take a peek at it. But basically I broke out, you know, five different uh, weights. Um, and this is what the kilogram equivalent. And then this would be the dose based on that 2.125 milliliters per kilogram. Uh, and then I broke that out into ounces and again in tablespoons. So you can kind of see what the rats were taking is if they, if they were like large, big rats. So let's just take 200 pound rat. Uh, you know, take a look at that. It's six and a half ounces a day. And that against this, you know, regiment, which is one per day for seven days, etc. So that's a half a can of soda, of oil, that they were squishing down these little rats uh, for the first week uh, and then so forth. So you can just imagine, and this confirms that the entire study was based on uh, toxicity. They wanted to see how much these guys could take. And they thought maybe they would die, you know, but the... Uh, Obviously, the results were different. So that's quite a bit of oil, uh, depending on what you weigh as a big rat. So with that in mind, you take a look at uh, the product findings. And this is the research that I did because, you know, you know, what are we buying? Because obviously, you know, we don't have the scientists making it for us. So we got to go out and buy some of our own. Or your other option is to make your own, which will be covered in part three. So if you were to go out on the Internet and try to buy, you're going to run into, you know, basically these are the leading brands that pop up first. And so I've kind of arranged them one through nine from the lowest priced one to the highest priced one. And you'll see what that looks like when we talk about the economics of doing, doing this. And then, and then really just let's just talk about for a second, what are you taking when you buy uh, these products and how do they relate to the rat study? Which is uh, really important because you, if everyone's trying to get the results that the rats had, you're clearly going to want to take the exact same formula that was used in that study. Right, right. So the rat study, again, 0.8 milligrams of fullerenes per milliliter. And then they also claim in the rat study that they used a fullerene purity uh, of 99.98% purity. And then also the oil, as you remember, came from Tunisia, a very special, uh, specific farm, not special, but specific farm in Tunisia. I think it was Talea area or something like that. Um, and, and, and when I look through all of these... Uh, manufacturers uh, none of them claim to have used or are using that specific oil from that specific area of Tunisia so right off the bat none of the products for sale match what was used in the study based just on oil and of course these vendors here they're using uh, extra virgin olive oil some are using virgin olive oil some are using sunflower oil 
uh, avocado oil and coconut oil so it's kind of all over the scale and there's actually one vendor here that actually uh, uses a special blend of oil that they created themselves uh, from their research that indicated what had the best uh, uh, saturation level for the uh, fullerenes within a ter certain type of uh, oil and so they actually came up with their special blend and if you take a look at it, it's real interesting it's this guy right here they were actually able to get a saturation of fullerenes uh, at 1.0 milligrams per milliliter uh, when everyone else basically was hitting 0.8 as it was in the study uh, you've got a couple of vendors that are a little bit lower than that so again you've got some vendors that come uh, that comply I guess to the you know I look at the rat study as the benchmark they set the bar so you've got some point eights there they set the you know that matches the study and then you've got one over one couple below uh, oh I know let me just point out to you these empty cells right here in the table uh, are just simply uh, the manufacturers that didn't respond to me I reviewed all of the websites for all of these vendors every page on every website um, and I also, when, if I couldn't find the information, I also sent an email out to them and asking them, you know, could you tell me what this data is so that I could fill out this table. I was, I, I was doing a comparative analysis uh, and they just didn't respond. They all had a week to respond. Uh, I didn't hear from them. I don't think that's a bad thing uh, or a good thing. It just, they, you know, they just didn't respond. So I don't have that data. So lastly, if you remember, we have 99.98% purity was what was used in the study. And we look at the purity of the fullerenes itself, the powder. How pure was that powder? You know, it, it is derived from taking, uh, you know, you take the, 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 I guess they're using shungite or coil, and they just crush it down, and then they're using solvents, and then bake it off, and put more solvents in, and then heat it up, and bake off the solvents. But that, you know, the, the difference here is that 99.98 is the absolute best purity that's for sale. Uh, if you go to SEI, research where the uh, scientists got their fullerenes and so it goes 98 9.98 is the top purity it goes to 99.95 is the next level down and then 99.90 is the lowest uh, level of purity uh, and you know I don't know how those differences are going to affect you and in, 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 in your dosages that none of that's been de uh, defined yet but it just makes it really clear if you look at this table Again, just like the oil, none of the vendors are using the same quality of fullerenes. That's neither good nor bad. It just is what they're doing, uh, but it is something to note so that this whole slide just shows you that there is nothing for sale that matches what was used in the study. Okay, that's just a, a data point. Not good, not bad. It just is. And then you take a look at what did those uh, vendors or what are those vendors recommending for dosages and I would say just definitely take a you know pause this slide and take a peek at it and kind of take a good look at it because it's all over the map you've got vendors out there saying hey uh, you know take two or three milliliters per day uh, and take you know if you go back to the rat study and just if you're a average adult male in America it's 196 pounds is the average now uh, you know, the recommendation for if you wanted to do the rat study is to take 192.8 milliliters a day. And then you look here and you've got, you know, like these folks down here and they're saying, oh, um, take two, you know, take two versus a 90, 190, you know, so, you know, the, so it's a, a wide spectrum. That's my point I want to make. Um, all of these vendors, though, um, uh, you know, have their own way of doing it. The most interesting ones are uh, the ones that actually did some math to kind of figure out that a you know it's not necessarily uh, uh, related to the study because the study was based on toxicity they were trying to poison the rats so they uh, determined and they don't explain how they determine that they would just uh, do allometric scaling and they would just say oh uh, we'll do we're just gonna do 30 percent of what they did in the study uh, because you know they were trying to poison the rats we're not trying to poison you know you shouldn't be trying to poison yourself instead you should you know this is what they recommended so their research research shows um, specifically uh, Bucky Labs and this uh, vendor number three uh, the, to take 30% uh, uh, of the rat study dosage. Uh, what's, what's funny is number four, you know, this vendor just goes, he just re refers you to the rat study. He's like, we, you know, we're not going to recommend anything. You go read the study. This other guy makes no claims so forth. So this is what people are selling this stuff are, are recommending and whether or not it works for you is a whole big question that is yet to be discovered because no one's done a human study so is it good is it bad is it enough maybe not but you know there is no definitive and that's the point of this slide is that there is no definitive recommended dosage by any of the folks selling this stuff and none of this stuff aligns to the rat study 
And then most importantly here is, is what's the economics of, of doing uh, C60 yourself or your, with your horse or dog or cat uh, as, a po- as it relates to the rat study. And so based on the rat study, which was, if you remember, the average male is 196. This is, just the, uh, this is just what I'm using for this table so you can understand the context. Uh, it said it was 6.5 ounces a day for you know, a 200-pound human, or sorry, 200-pound rat. And so if you take that much C60 oil, this is what it costs you. Um, if, I'm sorry, if you're familiar with my pricing study, this is what it, I come out with in the last pricing guide for all of these vendors. This is their best deal. Uh, and if you break it down to what it costs per ounce. So you've got this brand up here. Number one has got the lowest. And of course, number nine has got the highest per ounce price. So if you were to use these products and try to duplicate the amount of uh, C60 oil that was taken by the rats and you are a rat and you're trying to take this stuff, it's going to cost you. And depending on which vendor you choose, it could cost you up to $189 per dose or as cheap as 37 But wow, $37 a dose is, you know, and so it's, it's, it, there's a lot of uh, issues here with the economics. And then if you actually just stretch it out, right, because you know, no one's just going to take one dose. Uh, if you follow the regimen, uh, I, I, over here in the six month column, if you followed the regimen of the rat study and you took these products, uh, this is what it's going to cost you uh, in the first six months. It could be as low as $854, or with this product here, it could be as high as $4,600. So there's a lot of things to consider uh, economically when you're trying to um, add this to your regimen uh, or you know take this for whatever reasons you're taking it. The idea, though, is simply choose wisely or make it yourself. We'll talk about that in phase or part three. Okay. So the next one I want to talk about is the dosage considerations. I, I've been chewing on this for quite a while. I started taking this about four or five months ago. I've been thinking a lot about it, uh, experimenting with different brands. Uh, but the, the, at the end of the day, you know, if you're considering or are taking C60 or giving it to your critters, uh, you know, some of the considerations are, are the very first thing is, is you know, what's your goal? Uh, you, you know, are you taking and or you want to take or you want to use it for your animal uh, to just see what happens? Or are you you just you heard that C60 is 172 times more uh, stronger as an antioxidant. And you just want to add it to your other supplements that you're taking. Uh, you know, folks out there are looking at it from as an anti-cancer uh, damage repair. Uh, you know, there's this great uh, story. Uh, I read on Twitter of a lady who has a horse. Uh, it had been lame for like eight years. And, and you know, you, when you're lame, you, a horse is lame. So uh, you don't ride them. And, and it's kind of, uh, you just, you know, they can't really move around much. But uh, she said she started giving her uh, horse C60. And uh, the horse is trotting around just fine. You can't even tell it's lame. So, you know, a damage repair is obviously a, speci- a very uh, a good goal. Uh, or life extension, you know, as, as like the rats live 90% longer than other rats. Or simply, is your goal just to outlive your ex? Uh, you know, that's a very viable uh, goal, and, and any, any one of these things would be a good reason. But the reason that you're going to choose really determines on how much you want to take, you know, uh, and that's just something to think about. The other thing that I wanted to share with you was just the other considerations that I have as specific to the rat study where the rats are, you know, they only live 30 to 36 months. Uh, those are male will star rats. This is their uh, lifespan. And then humans, the average human male lives uh, in America is 78 years. And so humans have a 26% longer lifespan. So, how, you know, how does that relate to the rat study and the amount of C60 you might be considering taking? Well, first of all, we live a lot longer. So one, the first thing that comes to mind when I think that is the toxic load. We've had, you know, we have a lot longer to live, which means you have a lot more bioaccumulations of metals and toxins in your bloodstream, in your body that you've got build up over time and that the rats did not have. And so uh, that kind of lends to the idea of, hey, maybe you should just do a big load up front and then maintain afterwards or maybe even take more uh, to get all that crud and sludge out of your body. So, you know, keeping in mind, if you look at the starting point right here, that the rats started taking C60 at 10 months. And that's 28% into their lifespan. And so to translate that to the average human male in America, that means that you'd have to start taking um, C60 at 22 years old and, and follow the regiment to the end of time, right? Uh, now, if you look at the rest of us, we're 30, 40, 50, and 60 years old, you can see how we start really eating into that timeline. So that if you're 50 years old right now and you started C60, you're starting at 64% into your, life, your lifespan. 
okay, as compared to the rats. So, you know, it's really difficult to compare us to the rat study because we're so far along and the rats were when they started taking it. And then, of course, they were taking this mega dose. And, and you could see from the vendor recommendations, you know, if you're taking it based on what they said, you're taking a lot less than the rats. And so definitely factors to put into your calculations on, on how much you want to take because you are doing the research as well. And the last bullet I think that's very, very, very important here is, you know, we all know we're not rats, right? That's just duh. But look at the exponentially higher stress load. So not only do you have a longer period of time to bioaccumulate toxins and, and metals than rats would, but the other thing was that in the study, it actually said the rats were housed in individual cages in air-conditioned, uh, you know, comfort. Okay, so, and they're all male. So think about, from that perspective, uh, they don't have the stress of having to deal with females, and you'll all understand what I mean by that. Uh, they also were sitting around comfort in, uh, in, in cages and being fed every day. I mean, how stressful is that if you're a rat? The rest of us, right, we got to get up every day. We got to go to work. We got to fight in traffic. We got to deal with kids. We have to deal with teenagers and toddlers. And that's a lot of stress. And so we have a much higher load of stress. So not only do you have to, you have a buildup as a, as a critter, a big critter um, of toxins and metals because you've lived longer but you also have a lot more stress so you've got this huge load on you that the rats didn't have and that is also very important to consider when you start deciding how you want to dose yourself so after looking at all this data doing all of this research reading everything i could read the actual at the end of the day the dosage conclusion is nobody knows yet it's all just research so you are actually part of that research if if you're taking it, your dog's taking it, your horse is taking it, you're part of that body of knowledge that's being accumulated to see just how much does what. And, and that's, a, that's the fantastic part of this whole uh, science is that, you know, the study only came out five years ago. It's in its infancy. We're all doing it together. We're all learning together. So thank you for stopping by. This is my understanding dosages presentation. Uh, stay tuned for part three uh, on making your own C60 oil, where I'll be going over, um, of course, uh, how to do it, um, what to consider when you're doing it, the, uh, how much it's going to cost, um, and so forth. So thanks again for stopping by. I uh, really appreciate uh, your time, and have a great day.